Today, we are going to talk about anti-epileptic drugs. But before jumping into main topic, why don't we first revise about epilepsy and then learn how different drugs play its role and treat this condition? Epilepsy is a chronic disease in which seizures result from the abnormal discharge of cerebral neurons. It includes loss or disturbance of consciousness, with or without characteristic body movements, convulsions, sensory or psychiatric phenomena. These episodes are unpredictable, and their frequency is highly variable. Epilepsy has a focal origin in the brain. Manifestations depend on the site of the focus, regions into which the discharges spread and postictal depression of these regions. Epilepsies have been classified variously. Major types are described as generalized seizures that starts when all areas of the brain are affected by an abnormal electrical impulse and partial seizures that happens when unusual electrical activity affects a small area of the brain. Generalized seizures further includes generalized tonic-clonic seizures, which are common and last for one to two minutes. The usual sequence is aura, cry, unconsciousness, tonic spasm of all body muscles, clonic jerking followed by prolonged sleep and depression of all CNS functions. Absent seizures are also prevalent in children and lasts about half minute. Momentary loss of consciousness, patient apparently freezes and stares in one direction, no muscular component or little bilateral jerking. EEG shows characteristic three cycles per second spike and wave pattern. Atonic seizures include unconsciousness with relaxation of all muscles due to excessive inhibitory discharges. Patient may fall. Myoclonic seizures have shock-like momentary contraction of muscles of a limb or the whole body. Infantile spasms or hypsarrhythmia are seen in infants. Probably not a form of epilepsy. Intermittent muscle spasm and progressive mental deterioration. Diffuse changes in the interseizure EEG are noted. Partial seizures include simple partial seizures that last for half minute to one minute. Convulsions are confined to a group of muscles or localized sensory disturbance depending on the area of cortex involved in the seizure without loss of consciousness. The other one is complex partial seizures which includes the attacks of bizarre and confused behavior and purposeless movements, emotional changes lasting one to two men along with impairment of consciousness. An aura often precedes. The seizure focus is located in the temporal lobe. In simple partial or complex partial seizures, secondarily generalized occurs first and evolves into generalized tonic-clonic seizures with loss of consciousness. For your easy learning, let's understand the difference between seizure, convulsion, and epilepsy. Seizure is an episode of brain dysfunction due to abnormal discharge of cerebral neurons. Convulsions are involuntary, violent, and spasmodic or prolonged contraction of the skeletal muscle. Epilepsy is a disease due to disorder of brain function characterized by episodes of seizures. Next is status epilepticus. In status epilepticus, two or more seizures occur without recovery of full consciousness in between episodes. These may be focal or primary generalized, convulsive or non-convulsive. Continuous seizures last for at least 30 minutes or a state in which fits follow each other without consciousness being fully regained. Urgent treatment with intravenous agents is necessary to stop the fits, which, if unchecked, result in exhaustion and cerebral damage. The etiology is unknown in 60 to 70% of cases, but heredity is an important factor. Most of the cases of epilepsy are primary, idiopathic that has no specific cause, while some may be secondary to trauma or surgery on the head, intracranial tumor, tuberculoma, cystocercosis, and cerebral ischemia. Convulsions may be precipitated in epileptics by several groups of drugs, including phenethazines, tricyclic antidepressants, and many antihistamines. Treatment is symptomatic and the same whether epilepsy is primary or secondary. In this section, you will learn mode of action of anti-epileptic drugs in detail. Let's learn it in easy way. 
The strategies to treat epilepsy include enhancing GABA-mediated inhibition, reducing excitatory transmission or modifying the ionic conductance. Thus, antiepileptics act by one or more of the following mechanisms. Let us see what happens in inhibition of sodium channels. Normally, the neuron is more negative from inside than outside. The action potential starts when voltage-gated sodium channel opens and allows sodium ions into the cell. This will reverse the action potential means more negative outside and positive inside the neuron. More sodium influx leads to the excitation of neurons and this hyperactivity will cause seizures. Drugs act by producing a use-dependent block of neuronal sodium channels. Their anticonvulsant action is a result of their ability to prevent high-frequency repetitive activity. Drugs bind preferentially to inactivated sodium channels, stabilizing them in the inactivated state and preventing them from returning to the resting state, which they must re-enter before they can again open. High-frequency repetitive depolarization increases the proportion of sodium channels in the inactivated state, and because these are susceptible to blockade by the antiepileptics, the sodium current is progressively reduced until it is eventually insufficient to evoke an action potential. Neuronal transmission at normal frequencies is relatively unaffected because a much smaller proportion of the sodium channels are in the inactivated state. Carbamazepine, lamotrigine, valpro, phenytoin, and topiramate follow this mechanism. Now, how does enhancement of GABA takes place? GABA is a neurotransmitter that blocks impulses between nerve cells in the brain. Gamma aminobutyric acid, GABA, the principal inhibitory neurotransmitter in the cerebral cortex, maintains the inhibitory tone and put break on the excitatory impulses. These inhibitory neurons release neurotransmitter on GABA-A receptor. On the excitatory neuron GABA-A receptor opens and allow chloride ion to enter and causes more negative inside and positive on outside. This will thus limit the neuron further stimulation. Drugs are designed to inhibit the reuptake of GABA, and by increasing the amount of GABA in the synaptic cleft, increases central inhibition. The benzodiazepines, for example, clobazam or clonispam and phenobarbital also increase central inhibition by enhancing the action of synaptically released GABA at the GABA A receptor chloride channel complex. Valprot also seems to increase gabergic central inhibition by mechanisms that may involve stimulation of glutamic acid decarboxylase activity and inhibition of GABA T. Let us see how inhibition of calcium channels takes place. Calcium ion enter the neuron via voltage-gated calcium channel, which then leads to the release of glutamate from the vesicles into the synaptic cleft. Furthermore, glutamate binds to two types of receptors on postsynaptic neuron, which are named as AMP a receptor and NND a receptor. AMD a permit the entry of sodium ions, whereas NND allow entry of calcium ions. Additionally, calcium has another route for entry into postsynaptic neuron, which we call as T-type calcium channel. It opens in response to small depolarization. The influx of calcium ions leads to depolarization again and initiate action potential. Continuous high influx then causes hyperexcitation, which may result in seizures. Absent seizures involve oscillatory neuronal activity between the thalamus and cerebral cortex. This oscillation involves T-type calcium channels in the thalamic neurons, which produce low threshold spikes and allow the cells to fire in bursts. Drugs that control absent seizures reduce this calcium current, dampening the thalamocortical oscillations that are critical in the generation of absent seizures. Ethosuximide, valproate, and lamotrigine are the drugs which follow this mechanism. That's all for the mode of action. Now let's move ahead and see which different drugs are present in the classification and their respective role. In this section, you will learn the classification of anti-epileptic drugs and their molecular target as well as their adverse effects. Anti-epileptic drugs can be memorized by an easy mnemonic. This happy birthday is going to be my most gala one. H for hydentoin. B for barbiturates. D for deoxybarbiturates. I for minestilbene. 
S for succinamide. G for GB, a transaminase inhibitor. B for benzodiazepines. M for miscellaneous. M for most commonly used drugs. G for drugs influencing GABA. O for others. Heightened toins includes phenytoin and mephenytoin. Barbiturates includes phenobarbitone, methobarbitone. Deoxybarbiturate that include primidone. Aminostilbene that include carbamazepine. Next is succinamide that include ethosuximide. GABA transaminase inhibitor includes valproic acid and vigabatrin. Benzodiazepines includes diazepam, clonispam, lorispam, chlorispate. Miscellaneous include magnesium sulfate and acetazolamide. There are few newer agents. Most commonly used drugs are levetiracetam, lacosamide, used lamotrigine, topiramate. Drugs influencing GABA that includes gabapentin, pregabalin, gabavigabatrin, tigabine, stiripentol. Last one is a others which has felthamate, zonosamide, rufinamide, retiabine, hermpanol. Now let us talk about the drugs used in partial and generalized tonic-clonic seizures. Treatment with a single drug is preferred because this reduces adverse effects and drug interactions. Carbamazepine is a tricyclic compound closely related to imipramine. It is one of the most commonly used anti-epileptic drugs. Carbamazepine has good antiseizure activity. Its mechanism of action and anti-epileptic actions are similar to phenytoin, which means it blocks sodium channels. It is effective in generalized tonic-clonic seizures and focal-onset seizures. Carbamazepine is also useful in the treatment of trigeminal neuralgia and glossopharyngeal neuralgia. It is also found to be beneficial in mood disorders. Carbamazepine has mild antidiuretics effects. Absorption is slow and has a half-life of 30 to 36 hours. It is a powerful microsomal enzyme inducer, and after repeated administration, its half-life reduces to 8 to 12 HR due to autoinduction, enhances its own metabolism. Therefore, patients on carbamazepine need therapeutic drug monitor. Adverse effects include drowsiness, vertigo, ataxia, diplopia, blurring of vision, nausea, vomiting, and dizziness. Driving is dangerous for patients on carbamazepine. It also causes water retention due to anti-diuretics effects. Hypersensitivity reactions like skin rashes may occur. Hematological toxicity includes leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, and rarely agranulocytosis and aplastic anemia. It is a teratogen. Carbamazepine is an enzyme inducer and it can increase its own metabolism and that of other drugs like phenytoin, valproic acid, and clonispam. For your easy learning, I have a mnemonic for you. You can memorize carbamazepine by A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Here, A for auto-induction. B for bipolar mood disorder. C for chronic neuropathic pain. D for antidiuretic. E for enzyme inducer. F for focal onset seizure. G for generalized tonic-clonic seizure. H for hemifacial spasm. It's easy to remember now, right? Phenytoin has good anti-seizure activity and is one of the most effective drugs against generalized tonic-clonic seizures and partial seizures. It brings about its effects without causing general depression of the CNS. Phenytoin causes blockade of the voltage-dependent sodium channels and stabilizes the neuronal membrane. It inhibits the generation of repetitive action potentials. Phenytoin is poorly water-soluble, hence absorption is slow, but is almost complete on oral administration. Phenytoin should not be given IM because absorption is unpredictable and a fraction of the drug may also precipitate in the muscle. It is hydroxylated in the liver by a saturable enzyme system. Measurement of serum drug levels is extremely valuable because, once the metabolizing enzymes are saturated, a small increase in dose may produce toxic blood levels of the drug.
Adverse effects include ataxia, nystagmus, enlarged gum, gingival hyperplasia, acne, greasy skin, coarsening of the facial features and hirsutism, teratogenicity, osteopenia, interference with folic acid, megaloblastic anemia, neuropathy. By repeating the name of drug, you can easily memorize this drug. Let's do this. P for P450 enzyme. H for hirsutism. E for enlarged gum. NY for nystagmus. T for teratogenicity. O for osteopenia. I for interference with folic acid. N for neuropathy. Topramate locks sodium channels in cultured neurons. It also enhances the effects of GABA and blocks alpha amino 3 hydroxy 5 methyl 4 isoxazole propionic acid at NPA receptors. Adverse effects include nausea, abdominal pain, and anorexia. Topramate has been associated with acute myopia and secondary closed angle glaucoma. Phenobarbital is effective in tonic clonic seizures and partial seizures, but is ineffective in absent seizures. Additionally, it is much more sedative. Phenobarbital enhances the inhibitory neurotransmission in the CNS by enhancing the activation of GABA receptors and thus facilitating the GABA mediated opening of chloride ion channels. Tolerance occurs with prolonged use and sudden withdrawal may precipitate status epilepticus. Vigabatrin, gabapentin, levetiracetam, pregabalin, and tiagabine are used as add-on drugs in patients in whom epilepsy is not satisfactorily controlled by other anti-epileptics. Gabapentin and carbamazepine are also used to relieve shooting and stabbing neuropathic pain that responds poorly to conventional analgesics. Drugs used to treat absences are Ethosuximide, which is only effective in the treatment of absences and myoclonic seizures. It is a brief jerky movement without loss of consciousness. It is widely used as an anti-absence drug because it has relatively mild adverse effects, for example, nausea, vomiting. Drugs effective in tonic-clonic and absence seizures. Valprote is a very effective anti-epileptic drug useful in many types of epilepsies, including absence seizures, focal onset, and generalized tonic-clonic seizures. The advantages of Valprote are its relative lack of sedative effects, its wide spectrum of activity, and the mild nature of most of its adverse effects, nausea, weight gain, bleeding tendencies, and transient hair loss. The main disadvantage is that occasional idiosyncratic responses cause severe or fatal hepatic toxicity. Lamotrigine is used alone or in combination with other agents. Adverse effects include blurred vision, dizziness, and drowsiness. Serious skin reactions may occur, especially in children. These include Stevens-Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis. Clonispam is a potent anticonvulsant, but is very sedative and tolerance occurs with prolonged oral administration. Lastly, drugs that are effective in status epilepticus. Lorispam or diazepam is used to treat status epilepticus. It is initially followed by phenytoin if necessary. If the fits are not controlled, the patient is anesthetized with propofol or thiopental. Abrupt withdrawal of anti-epileptic drugs can cause rebound seizures. It is difficult to know when to withdraw anti-epileptics, but if a patient has been seizure-free for three or four years, gradual withdrawal may be tried. Anticonvulsant therapy in pregnancy requires care because of the teratogenic potential of many of these drugs, especially valprote and phenytoin. Also, there is concern that in utero exposure to valprote may damage neuropsychological development, even in the absence of physical malformation. It was all about anti-epileptics. For more pharmacology videos, keep watching scotia.com.